I mean, I'm guessing that the superpower is not related to the testicles in the game. Re so. remember, remember that testicles is okay, but this is the edge of what we can say. Hello and welcome to The Last Standee, a board game pop. Hello and welcome to The Last Standee, a board game podcast coming to you from five exciting countries across Europe. Today I'm joined here by Alexis. Hi, it's me. Alessio. Hi everybody. Audrey. Hello everyone. Escaped from the hospital is David. Alessio. Hi everybody. Audrey. Hello everyone. Escaped from the hospital is David. Hey, hey. <laughs> and as always... I'm your host, Fen. We're going to be talking about a range of different topics from across the hobby, and today we'll start with the standee catch-up, as usual. So, uh, how's everyone... I suppose we start with David, as I kind of loaded that. So, David, um, do tell us, how are you doing? Yeah, I had a small surgery to get rid of some issues with my scar. Hopefully it gets better after after this, so this mess is all will, be, will be over soon. <laughs> Yep, we certainly hope so. I mean, you can get back to painting when that's all sorted. Yes. Handling an airbrush better than I can. Uh, think so. <laughs> anyone can. Anyone can. I, <laughs> my, my infinity uh, double action whatever doodad airbrush is sitting there sadly, and it has been since before Christmas because I don't know what I'm doing. I um I begged, it's just, just not sticking. So <laughs> we're gonna we, we gotta we'll That'd put him cool. up we'll put him up for board um, <laughs> and everything. He wants to come to Scandinavia anyway, so and maybe I can steal a, a bust off him. We'll see. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Well, that's great. Uh, Alexis, how are you doing? I've been doing right. So I've been really excited about the <laughs> recent few trailer, um, and it's coming all, out later this month. So that's uh, that's where my mind is at at the moment. Um, Otherwise, I've been playing um, uh, Escape the Dark Sector with a friend. Uh, last week, we talked, uh, well, two weeks ago, we talked about um, um, Escape the Dark Castle. And I've tried the, the Cypher version, and I can say that it's uh, better than the, the base game, um, since it has a, a sort of escalation type uh, mechanic. Um, I would recommend that one if anybody was interested by the game last week. And wanted to uh, try it in a more try it in a more sci-fi way. Uh, Escape the Dark Sector, really good. Yeah, for um, me, it's uh, sold out, so I can't do much about that. But uh, speaking of Monster Hunter, are you feeling particularly excited about um, Steamwork Games' uh, Kickstarter upcoming on Monster Hunter? Um, I'm I'm cautiously following it. Um, I've not really been uh, really into anything that uh, Steamwork Games has done before. Yeah, old Steamforged. Um, they did uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which, yeah. uh, if you remember, that was in uh, was that our first episode uh, or second? I maybe think our second one. Second one, yeah. Um, and I hold you know, generally the re audience reception is a bit lukewarm on it. Um, I went into it as a solo player and a cooperative player, and just threw out the the rules of semi cooperative, which don't work, and went actually. There's a load of great mechanics yeah. in here. Um, For from what it seemed, like the mechanics part uh, of it was really needed uh, a bit of work, from what I understood. Yeah, the content is not quite there yet, but it's due yeah. to arrive this summer. And uh, I think I'll touch back to it when, when I do. Uh, there was also the Dark Souls board game that got a bit of a mixed reception in that apparently the dungeon crawl section was but the yeah that, that's my experience with it yeah it was revised anyway because the first edition i think that a lot of people protested against general quality if i remember correctly i think so i remember there being some issues my my brother um backed it and was a bit disappointed i remember a f seeing a few floppy hammers and was a bit disappointed i remember a f seeing a few floppy hammers yeah, that, that's uh, that's one of the cases in which the community helped a lot uh, Steamforged games because the the new edition I think w was revised with a lot of community suggestions and it was pretty good in the end. Yeah, I got a, a lot of community suggestions and it was pretty good in the end. Yeah, I got to say, you know, um, congratulations to Steamforged games for being open to community input and revising based on it and um, salvaging something. You know, that could they could have just walked on and gone well, whatever. We finish that next next Kickstarter. 
it, it very much our game is better than the previous one. Um, so regardless of how good those games are, uh, at least it shows that they are growing and learning from the mistake. Um, so yeah, I, I'm keeping an eye on the Monster Hunter game. Uh, it might be very fun. I think that it's a game that would very much benefit from being, um, um, you know, walking onto the, the cabbage formula type uh, type thing. Uh, Absolutely. Because, it, because, you know, that that's what inspired uh, Kingdom Death, so... Yeah, that's right. There's a, a lot of monster hunter in Kingdom Death, and one would hope that they, they cycle it back around and take the best parts of Kingdom Death, especially, and feed that back in. We'll see, though. I mean, the trailer landed recently for the board game, and they're going to be putting the Kickstarter on April 20th. So we'll see. It might be, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful, but it's not, I'm not just going to run and blindly back it. Um, yeah, same. I, I'll yeah. just keep soon. Uh, I can mention that uh, in the coming weeks, I might have my first uh, little Morgbok module that might be uh, coming out. So that's fun. Uh, Semi-officially. Oh, that's, yeah. that's cool. That is cool. Um, and uh, you, Alessio, how have you been doing uh, recently? How have you been doing uh, recently? He's fallen down a deep hole. Oh, no. Is it deep thought? Ah. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I, literally, uh, unless... Here you are. You're welcome back. Ah, yeah, uh, sorry. That question was really taxing, I take it. Oh, you're welcome back. Ah, yeah, uh, sorry. That question was really taxing, I take it. Do you want to ask it again? Uh, I think that's a good answer to how are you doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, um, so, how am I doing? Uh, oh, Fine enough, thank you. And this, how am I doing? Uh, fine enough, thank you. And these two weeks happened quite a lot, actually. Uh, first, I received the, the Wave 3.1 of Kingdom Death, and I got taxed with import fees for that. That was uh, 32 euros for the uh, 32 euros for the tripping up set, and. Uh, a week later, my, my co-worker and friend got it uh, all the same package and got taxed with import fees for 16 euros. So that's a way to begin the week peace. After that, today, I just received the Whale Riders pledge from uh, the Grail Games company and uh, it's a new Knizia game, so... Uh, with all that it entails. I just looked at the box for the moment, but uh, I hope uh, I could review it or at least comment on it uh, or about it, uh, or about it uh, soon enough. Oh, that just sounds fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does um, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and Audrey? Yeah, uh, I've been doing okay. A bit of gaming here and there, and we will talk about it soon. Gaming here and there, and we will talk about it soon. Uh, I got a few packages, a few packages as well on my side. I got the Wave 3.1 uh, of Kingdom Deaths as well, so that was pin up of death 2 to 5 for me as I didn't bag the Kickstarter I had no access to Satan and a friend is in plastic dust right now um, I have I think 7 left to build <laughs> I didn't lose time and uh, tomorrow is going to be my boyfriend's birthday so I got him a few D&D gifts uh, because we are uh, I would not say B. I got him the uh, DM screen because it was completely out of stock in France and apparently I spotted a miracle restock and I think he's going to be thrilled with it because we have the screen already but in English and he isn't as good in English as I am so the French version is really going to help him. I'm sorry, sorry, I, I have to, for a moment, um, my folks have just arrived <laughs> and the dog is, she's uh, exploding with happiness so um, you guys carry on and I'll be back in a few minutes. See you in a minute. <laughs> okay, so it's episode 10. 10? So, oh, yeah. That's a great number. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we, we, uh... we came a long way. Yeah, that, that's a long way. Yeah, that, that's a big milestone. We should be happy about it. 
<laughs> yeah, and we have basically a format for this podcast, so I'm quite happy for this. Um, I think we can uh, gloss over the news or we can just uh, report a bit of the bits from the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now, be before we, we move on to the news, I think one thing that uh, would be interesting to say is that in the in the recent weeks, what we've been doing, uh, Audrey and I, and one of our uh, friends in Patreon, Remy, is playing a, a bit of King's Dilemma with uh, Audrey's boyfriend, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Three sessions? Two sessions? Uh, two sessions, and uh, I think the first uh, three uh, kings. Yes, three ah. kings, yeah. Yeah. A, a three-player, a three-player game then. Four. A four-player game. That's my boyfriend. Four-player game. Okay. Yes. How did you find it? it it's uh, very fun. I don't understand anything. I'm, <laughs> no, I understand what I'm doing, but I'm doing it more for the lore, the roleplay, and the story than for the objective. So I have lots of crave. I have no idea how it ended up that way. Uh, it could help you. No, I I don't really pay enough attention to the resource tracker. I think. Oh, okay. In the meantime, I finished. Uh, I actually have to confirm that this is the best ending for a guessy game I ever played so far, Damn, including all, all, all the key, all the pandemic legacy series. Everything. It, uh, this is the best ending there is. It's tense. It feels. Uh, it uh, uh, doesn't leave basically anybody out. I I basically lost all the all my games and in the end I was in so close to winning. Of Ooh. course I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, that, that, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Praise. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to to get uh, to get to the ending and to see how, how everything works. On my end, uh, pretty much the same uh, way that Audrey has been uh, going around. I think it's very fun to engage in the in the roleplay aspect and to try and think uh, about how the game works. But I think that like the the specific objective for the different game um, don't always seem to be that interesting to follow. And I usually prefer to just look into my um, my own yeah. faction's uh, long-term objectives and winning like specific games always feel a bit counterintuitive to the, rest, to the rest of the game. I understand why it's there, just um, it seems to be a bit getting in the way. Um, yeah, basically that, that's what I did in my gameplay. I <laughs> th That's the way to lose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, King's Dilemma, very fun. Um, how, yeah. Anything that you wanted to add, Fen? No, uh, we were just going to talk briefly about um, Core Quest has been funded, which is yes. fantastic. And um, I'm I'm certainly a backer at the price it's at, and they've got a publisher now, and um, I think it's a publisher, one of the guys running, and um, I think it's a publisher, one of the guys running the publishing company is was involved with the game from the beginning, so uh, they've. Uh, it's all a nice bit of continuity and I'm very confident it's in good hands. Um, there's no sign of whether they'll be doing localization, though. Obviously it's a though. Obviously it's a UK game. Um, UK creators, they're not sure if they can afford to uh, localize the game because of it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I backed it as well. Yeah, I do for the kids. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. The... Yeah. The look of the game, kids. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The look of the game and uh, the ID behind it and everything just makes this game look uh, like a really good deal, especially if you have kids. Yes, yeah, um, you call it a labor of love. <laughs> and uh, speaking uh, of Kickstarters, I think Audrey wanted to say something. Yes, um, you call it a labor of love. <laughs> and uh, speaking uh, of Kickstarters, I think Audrey wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I just wanted to have a very quick mention. I think it 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 uh, it would deserve a special episode about uh, representation in games. But I've been following from a bit from far what Tiny Epic Dungeons, uh, how it's happening, what Gameling Games uh -huh. is doing, and uh, I think it's a good example of a company seeing feedback from the community about representation, about postures, about sexualization of the uh, characters and changing things. At, at... Uh, actually, I think that the, 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 the matter of the, 
of the representation in that game was uh, was raised by Elizabeth Hargrave, uh, non- exactly. nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> And so, Gamelin Games also asked people to leave her alone because some people, of course, started harassing her. But this industry has yeah, to be friendly important. towards each other and respect each other. Yeah, more than yeah, anything, that's true. the most important thing that they've uh, stepped up and done is saying, uh, no, this this critique is fine. We want to hear this. And you, you don't, you know, the, you, in fact fans and backers they're not involved in this conversation because they're not involved in this conversation in my opinion it's not their place you know elizabeth hargrave was what she said was absolutely right yeah actually congratulations to her for winning this battle i think congratulations for just stepping up and being a female designer who has put herself out stepping up and being a female designer who has put herself out there uh, because it paves the way for others to also be able to, to have these conversations. It's important. Um, yeah. Very important to, to not feel intimidated at the first point, which is a still a lot of intimidation for um, for women, intimidation for um, for women, um, for also for people of, um, uh, you know, uh, non-white people as well. There's still a level of intimidation, whether it's intentional or not, because this is a very white male dominated thing, industry still. Um, we're all working towards changing that and it'd be wonderful because diversity brings person she's got authority she did it very well and she she stepped up as a, an example yeah yeah definitely sure. a, a very good um to circle back a little bit on the um uh on Cora quest and uh their new publishing deal with uh bright aid uh, game even though they announced it after the campaign was uh ended uh, i think that they did it in a really respectful way like it's only going to affect the retail version uh the kickstarter version is still going to be uh, prepared by the um by the, the the team of um uh what's his name dan something uh then uh, they handled it very well and it's always important when you're dealing with a Kickstarter, uh, when they are adding a publishing deal to the mix, uh, to be careful about that because that's kind of the point of a Kickstarter is to to have that first impulse and to sort of bypass the uh, publishers pretty ugly. And I think that we're going to talk about here uh, a good game that had a really good um, package, but unfortunately because of... Um, a publishing deal that was added at the very end of the Kickstarter and that the backers were extremely um, angry about, uh, about uh, kind of turned the game uh, very sore. Um, right, Fan? Yeah, you're right. So let me picture this. Let me paint a picture for you. You and your adventuring friends, you've traveled off on a journey, you've delved deep down, far below the ground, and you've fought and battled your way through countless foes and enemies and you fought and battled your way through countless foes and enemies in search of treasure and then suddenly things have gone horribly wrong you wake up That's in clunk. the darkness alone completely like weaponless <laughs> uh, badly injured and the last survive injured and the last surviving member of your party from there no. From there, you you have only one choice. You need to gather your wits, use whatever you have around you, and fight your way, tooth and nail, back up out to freedom. This game is un. This game is unbroken. It's a solo game uh, from our team Savarov. Now, we're gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about the game, and then we're gonna talk about some of our experiences with getting our hands on the game because we have three different. Um, experiences <laughs> with how yeah. how we got it, with how yeah. how we got it. So, at its heart, Unbroken is a resource management game. You have trackers that give you access to resources. The primary of which are effort and time. And the game has two sections to it, and it's where you spend mostly time to draw cards or perform other actions such as scouting ahead to see what kind of monster you're facing or um, or, or orienteering to get a bit of a better um, idea of where you are and then drawing uh, exploration cards and resources effectively turning your time and your effort into other things 
uh, for example, you could be gaining cunning, which is a, a stat used for um, like roguish type of activities. The knife will use that for additional damage or gaining metal to construct be better weapons or wood. For absolutely need enough food, otherwise you're going to starve or treasure, which is most of the time worth nothing except points at the end. Woo. Um, you know, survival first, treasure later. But the part of this I like the most is your primary stat, your primary resource is effort. And effort, you have to spend effort, you have to spend it to do everything, but it's also your life force, it's your hit points. If you run out of it, you're dead. So everything you do to spend effort shortens your survival. So you're constantly waiting between, can I afford to spend these? Or hit points on this stuff or should points on this stuff or should I not do that I don't know how much extra I'm going to get on top of that effort is upgradable it can turn into uh, what's it called um, it can turn into medium effort and large effort through uh, through very by focusing and inspiration but the thing about these by focusing and inspiration but the thing about these is they're worth more when you spend them except if you spend them as wounds then they're just worth just as much as any other wound so it really sucks to lose a medium effort as a wound because actually that could have been four four points and the other half to time is interesting in that you, to time is interesting in that you have to spend it when you draw cards uh, you have a certain amount to start with um, it's 12 uh, could be, was it seven eight 12 so on the, like a set amount for the level that you're on and you draw draw two cards or more cards if you spent a bit of time preparing cards if you spent a bit of time preparing and you got you're going to lose time but if you get down to near the bottom and you pick a card that's going to reduce you to zero time the monster's going to ambush you and take a real swipe at you and get a like get a big advantage probably some monsters don't ambush probably some monsters don't ambush and that's a great gambling mechanic where you're constantly looking at these decisions and and even drawing the cards is oh should i shouldn't i do I have enough time left? Am I going to get ambushed? Do I know what the monster is? And it's this this loop that's quite interesting of preparation. When you get into the combat, get into the combat, and there's four levels, so four different monsters, and each level has one of six different monsters. Uh, it's a little bit more straightforward in that the monsters kind of randomly roll on the table to see what they're going to do each round, and you get to pick how you're going to injure them. You don't have to really worry too much about randomness at your end. A bit more time unless the monster wasted a ton of your time and then you go back around again get that through that four times with increasing difficulty and you survive and you win the whole game done 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes very simple to manage very easy to follow and clear clear decisions to make with how you're improving and getting better uh, i think this is a a very well done solo game it's not the best I've ever played. That still remains Coffee Roaster, but it's it's up there as a really good, enjoyable game. Yeah, actually, the mechanic of uh, resource management is pretty common. We watched the, the a first review of Unbroken, I think, in 2018, uh, when a reviewer got an early copy of the game. I, I think that. Uh, I got interested in immediately and we will talk about this later but uh, basically um, I have I have to say that uh, this game uh, is uh, a resource management game exactly like set a watch which is another solo but possibly multiplayer game which is based on a card mechanism which is uh, managing your exhaustion so it's effort and time but you just go against instead of dungeon levels you go against uh, uh, waves of monsters until you spot the final boss and you have a fight with the final boss and uh, in the meantime you exhaust all your possible actions you try to recover them and uh, basically it plays the same because you have to manage your resources to get in good enough shape to beat the final boss which is basically the same mechanic i have to say unbroken is possibly a lot better uh, 
uh, than set a watch because it's a bit more interesting the choices are a bit more compelling you have more options you can move in multiple ways you can avoid encounters you don't want to have so it's actually a, a, a very decently polished game it's a very good game it's well made and well thought yeah I mean that's game it's a very good game it's well made and well thought yeah I mean that's that's the thing like through my uh, relatively quick summary I didn't even get to touch on the fact that you can trick some of the monsters except for the final ones to bypass yeah, exactly. the whole fight <laughs> the fact that you can suffer conditions that did debilitate you um, or and you get a fight <laughs> the fact that you can suffer conditions that did debilitate you um, or and you gain skills that you can make use of to get better and stronger it's um it there's an awful lot and a lot of decisions packed into a very short time space um and it tells a great story and has a lot of uh emergence and it has a lot of replayability factor with 24 different monsters six six at each different level and four levels so it's uh, uh it's, yeah. it's good um additionally like when it comes to component wise um i i, I think it's very well done the um uh, the cards could be an extra ply um and but they are the the graphic design is very clean clear and good i found the um the references they have for flow charting your way through the whole game to be fantastic very easy and clear to follow um i would say a load of extra blank cards and i don't know about you guys but i never use these like I'm I'm going to write on these with my terrible crabby doctor handwriting, <laughs> and I'm not going to be able to follow what's going on. Um, I, I like the idea of giving people access to make their own cards, custom. I, I like the idea of giving people access to make their own cards, custom cards. But really, it's best to just put the template somewhere and provide a print-on-demand service of some kind for people to do it that way. Uh, you get a bit of re reoccurring continuous income maybe then um and perhaps if someone does something really good um and perhaps if someone does something really good you could approach them and authorize it as a semi-official fan expansion sell it on the site give them a designer's cut who knows but uh, basically i'm looking at these like well i'm going to use these if i ever lose any of the cards from the box um that's kind of it really and the score pad that's kind of it really and the score pads like it's nice enough but just, I, I just don't use score pads for games like this. I, I never use score pads. I, I, I made my own. Uh, f to, to talk about Coffee Roaster, I think I never touched a sheet of the score pad because I just write my score. I think I never touched a sheet of the score pad because I just write my score. Mm. Yeah, I got um, I got the Roland Wright Copenhagen game um, just recently, and I'm already thinking maybe I should like get a laminator and just laminate a set of sheets. <laughs> so because I, I, that game's gone once you've finished writing on all of the pad and pad and and all right, I have to go buy another copy you could always do that but it feels a bit wasteful and uh i don't know <laughs> i'm like, like maybe i just laminate a set for each player and don't have to worry 10 20 30 years down the line about having a box that oh we've got one play left yeah and citadel but uh we are uh hijacking this thread so i i won't talk about this but i think the seven citadel has uh, a similar issue with the uh, representation of the city uh, when you unlock facilities but anyway yeah that, that's always bad when you have to consume resources consume resources like that yes it is but uh, yeah to get back on track and just to put a little bow on this uh honestly if i was just going to give this game a score out of 10 i think i'd be giving it an 8 out of 10 i, I think it's especially the speed in which it plays and set up and breakdown and how tidy the box is, everything fits in there nice. How tidy the box is, everything fits in there nicely without ever feeling squeezed. And the box is very small and a good, good quality box. Very solid, feels nice. Um, that, uh, that, yeah, that, that would be for me, would be like this is an 8 out of 10 game. But that's out of 10 game. But that's not what it has online, score wise. <laughs> yeah, just just my impression because I, I haven't played it myself, but like the impression I had from like uh, let's play videos and everything, 
um, it really does this push your lot mechanic quite well. Like you can just just exhaust exhaust your time completely, but then you, there might something might bad might happen, and that's very interesting mechanic. Yeah, yeah, it it, it does it does uh, very well in in making you like have those tight, difficult decisions um, with a with a bit of going to solve it. Um, it but uh, it doesn't overdo it. Like the randomness is there in how the monster attacks you. The randomness is there in um, what cards you're going to draw, but you do have control over that. Um, and that's kind of it. Sure, the monster you're going to face is random, but you can find that information out in advance. Tend to be on the first monster and just be like, whatever. I, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to save that health. I'm going to have it as an extra buffer. In we go. Is, uh... It almost feels bad to come in after such praise because it is indeed a very fun game. But I was one of the backers. Yeah. And... <laughs> we, we, yeah we, I, I... We start, I was starting to get towards that. It's, yeah. I think it's an 8 out of 10 game, but it's a 5.9 on Board Game Geek. And yeah. um, that was part I, I of what w- drew me to it. So we shall start with your experiences, Alexis, as you were one of the original backers. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um... It is a 5.9, and only because it's a really good solo game. If it had been a mediocre one, it would have been a zero for a lot of people. So the thing is that when they started the campaign, uh, they got half a million uh, Canadian dollars. Um, And the way that they opened their campaign was that they were going to be uh, open about everything that's happening, that... um, the the file and the game and everything was ready to go that within a month of finishing the campaign they would send everything to the printer and print it because all that they needed was the the cost of production basically and they uh, put forward a money back guarantee uh note that if you if you're not happy with the game you can just send it back because they are that confident about the game um <laughs> the problem was that that spoiler at the, yeah <laughs> at the very day uh, at the very last uh, day of the campaign they added um, Golden Bell production I think Golden Bell Studio. Studios Golden Bell, Studios. Golden Bell Who... Games with yeah which is part of Golden Fen Bell is... Studios yeah Fen is going to get into uh, a little bit more details about them in it but suffice to know they have a terrible uh, reputation the by the time uh, they worked on uncharted there had already been three projects that they uh, tanked um, and every time it was kind of the same pattern where they would help a game they would help a game they would help publish a game they would delay the publishing they would um, charge more for the ch- the shipping and they would use some of the uh, Kickstarter money to produce um, props and like uh, plushies or like posters and stuff like that. That's um, props and like uh, plushies or like posters and stuff like that that nobody asked and weren't part of the production to like sell as additional uh, component and to try to um, uh, push people to spend more. And the problem is that it was already a pattern and we need to try to um, uh, push people to spend more. And the problem is that it was already a pattern. And when uh, Artem, the unbroken uh, person, uh, announced the game, everybody told uh, told him to, to drop them and to not walk with them. Artem dropped them and to not walk with them. Artem went forward and... Um, the game was delayed for a year because they were working on some uh, additional uh, publishing stuff. So uh, it was supposed to be ready to go to the printer, but was delayed a year, which, which people didn't really like. And then it uh, a year later, they started sending the game to people, but requesting um, 15 more uh, dollar to for the shipping cost. But people had already paid shipping costs, uh, $10 already for each game. And it's a uh, top that, um, you know, you you would pay basically double to the price of the game. 
uh, in total if you if you paid the the full ch- shipping. You and would so it's pay been... another copy of the game just to get it shipped to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, and so it's is that how much you they asked you? Uh, uh, Thirty eight uh, dollars to get the game because I I bought the European edition. Um, and uh, they've asked me fifteen dollar, fifteen additional dollar to get the to get the game uh, shipped to to me uh, finally. And so it's been three years guarantee. Uh, they refuse to uh, issue any refund. Uh, the Golden Bell Studio people have been extremely um, angry at their backers, insulting them, uh, doxing them in some cases. It's, yeah, it's that, that was. That was the saddest part, looking at the Kickstarter comments yeah. of, after the ma- um, after the months. Yeah, the, there was um, the, there was indeed some shots fired on both sides, but it is worth always saying uh, Golden Bell is meant to be the ones who are able to behave professionally in this sort of situation. Yeah, um, and, it, and at times it, they didn't. It's the exact... Um point of a publisher the reason you take a publisher is that if there's a delay with the getting the money to ship something well you can use the publisher to you know uh, be the insurance for that basically to uh, uh, handle that properly but the, the fact that they were acted they were adding plushies to people's package and so spending money to produce those uh, those soft toys instead of using that money for shipping uh, and they also like uh, sold some of the Kickstarter units to shops uh, already. Like they, they uh, were very happy to send those to Amazon and to different shops all over the world to try to get more uh, money to fulfill the backers, which is okay, but they handled it extremely poorly. Um, and yeah, I, I still have in the game. Uh, while I, I think it's. Um, it's a pretty good one. I, I have no idea if I'll ever receive it, which isn't um, really great. And the problem is that uh, people can buy it in the shop, can go, you know, anywhere and, and, and buy it and play it, and I can't. And that's kind of uh, annoying. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, and that and... brings me to my experience. Yep. <laughs> that's where I was going to go. Take it away. Yeah, actually, uh, like I said, I I saw the game mentioned on BGG on the new reviews page, which I recommend because it's uh, a good place to spot new games and new stuff and new comments about uh, think, things you think you know. And uh, I saw a review on a pre-production copy of Unbroken. It was uh, really cool. Uh, uh, it, the time I think it was 2017, so or 2018. It was a lot of time ago. So uh, I actually uh, there, there was no competition set to watch, which by the way is an excellent game. wasn't already uh, wasn't uh, in sight. It would be uh, I think half a year later. So it, it was uh, a good game with. Uh, poor competition and it was very it was very interesting so i went checking the kickstarter page and i saw the involvement of golden bell studios i have to say and this is mean uh, for me to say but uh, i was a bit wary of this because i knew of the tanked projects before so uh, what i did was just to pledge uh, for backer kit access got the five dollars print and play and uh, i basically had uh, the game i think immediately i i was checking before recording uh, the my, my backer kit page to see on my account to where it is and uh, i think i got it delivered on 2018 in, in march and actually i got the the print and play of the game two updates with updated rules, I hope they made it to the final game and they uh, uh, and they were included already in the physical version because otherwise it's a bummer for for people who paid for the entire game. And then I got translation and print and play version of, in basically every language, at least the classical Euro Five. There's German, there's Italian, there's Italian, there's French, there's Spanish, and there's English. So. 
actually I got an excellent game uh, immediately. I just had to print it, laminate it a bit, and it was ready to go because I think it uses three token stops. Uh, except dice, of course. So I uh, had a pretty good experience and uh, uh, as harsh as it might seem, I, I think I won uh, in this little contest of who got the, the best edition of the game because that, that spared a lot of drama later. Yeah, yeah. So for me, yeah, yeah. So for me, um, I was perusing my local stockists board games and noticed they had uh, unbroken up a 25% off. And uh, I, I jumped on the the website's very nice in that they just provide a direct link to board game. The the website's very nice in that they just provide a direct link to board game geek. So I was like, okay, well it's on deal. I'll take a quick look. It's a solo game. Saw the reviews, um, the ratings even. And I was like, okay, five point nine. Don't know. Probably not interested. Um, but then clicked into the reviews, saw Radu's review, to the reviews, saw Radu's review, and saw a whole bunch of positive reviews about the game. And I thought, okay, well, if you see positive reviews and you see a bad rating, generally this indicates something's gone wrong and there's been some review bombing going on, rating bombing. And sure enough, I got into the comments, sorted by the lowest, and lo and behold, sorted by the lowest, and lo and behold, quite, quite bad. Um, a lot of people talking about the Kickstarter, and I was like, okay, well, I mean, that sucks, but uh, I can get this at a discount, it's a solo game, and from what I've seen, it certainly seems like one I'd enjoy playing, um, and I thought it would be an interesting topic to talk, um, and I thought it would be an interesting topic to talk about on the podcast, so I picked it up, played it, best of all, uh, it turns out I, I'm one of those people who got one of those um, Kickstarter copies that was sent out. I got a little bag in there, I got a poster, I got a box that said, thanks for back it, believing in us and backing. I'll interrupt you for just mm. one quick second, but uh, that, that box that was shipped to everybody and uh, that people had to pay extra to, to get, um, there, the game's uh, tagline is uh, make them pay. Which is yeah. very <laughs> yeah. That that backfired a lot once thing unfolded. Yeah, I, I can. This is cool. <laughs> I I did after I started reading into everything that gone on. I did look again at that box and go, oof, yeah, that yeah. that hasn't aged well. No. Yeah, like I imagine paying an extra like uh, fifteen dollars one of the to be part of the first wave and then receiving the that box and being like, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to your... Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I did my due diligence. I did a fair amount of looking around. The story's quite fragmented online, um, and a lot of it, um, from your experience and, and so on. Uh, I will just say there's, there's one thing that did happen um, that was particularly uh, problematic for people, which is... Um, Let's see if I can. I just want to make sure I read it correctly again. This is somebody else uh, told us. Yeah, so called Media Mail. Now, Media, oh, yeah. yes, Media Mail is a service that occurs in America where you can ship educational materials. Now, great games are absolutely like no, they're they're, they're not allowed. But um, it was said that they had an agreement with the post office that allowed shipping of this game. Uh, who knows? Maybe they spoke to someone. Maybe they don't will this game. Uh, who knows? Maybe they spoke to someone. Maybe they don't will never really they did know. Not. Uh, yeah. They went into court for that. <laughs> okay, they went to court for it. Fair enough then. Um, as to say that it's fragmented everywhere. So I've, I, all I could do is like, well, that happened. I oh, don't yeah. know the background of it. Um, yeah, and people were receiving the ground of it. Um, yeah, and people were receiving this thing with a fine slapped on it for it being shipped incorrectly, which was like, oof. so they were not particularly happy about it all. Uh, and yeah, as you've talked about, a lot of troubles with it getting shipped to everyone else. Sorry. Yeah, it's a just just a really sad situation. Um, I want to say that um, there is a very nice interview. Uh, that our team gave on Board Game Atlas, and he does talk about this um, and and things that are going on. It looks like mansion on this. 
but then yeah. hopefully he seems to be free to go off and do his own games in the future that... with a different one. Because I, I, the big thing I'd like to say is, yeah, our team did originally misquote the costs that were going to be involved, and that it kind of started some of the problems, but to have gone very badly wrong and i would hate for somebody who's come up with such a great game here and his previous game cauldron's not bad either um to get heavily tainted um i i would like to, i want to see what he's going to do next um because yeah no autumn is definitely uh, uh i think that uh you know golden bell bell did what they do best which is uh take advantage of a young designer and uh, promise them to be able to uh, fulfill a ton of pro uh, of promise and to help them navigate the difficult, uh, you know, uh, walk, uh, you know, uh, walk of publishing game, and then they just fucked everything up. And because their own reputation is not, uh, you know, can't really be tanked worse than it was. Um, uh, I mean, they they went to court for that, so I I have the right to to say it. I I have the right to to say it. Uh, they went on to um, uh, an episode of um, uh, Judge Judy because there was another young um, uh, game designer that produced a game about uh, making I think it was it was making sushi or something like that, like a, a sort of um, a, a sort of um, a sushi game type. Uh, type stuff they she had a, a, a bright idea the game looked extremely fun golden bell went in and they completely destroyed uh, the whole just uh, to clarify um yeah. it was uh, people's court that they were on people's court okay um, I, I thought it was uh no. yeah J judy <laughs> that they were on people's court okay um, I, I thought it was uh no. yeah J judy <laughs> yeah uh, I, I know it was something that was recorded and then sent on tv I've one of those got the details um, here uh, the episode uh was titled you are a card shark and the case was refusing to fold but yeah uh the case was refusing to fold but yeah um so yeah, sadly they uh, they they have a bit of a reputation about this. Yes. Yeah, and, and they got banned from Kickstarter, which is incredible because Kickstarter never does anything about uh, scammers usually. I, it's incredible because Kickstarter never does anything about uh, scammers usually. I know that's insane. It's, it's yeah. huge to get that. We'll, we'll have to see if it sticks. There's plenty of ways they could try and get around it, but hopefully they don't do anything like that. Or if they do. Um, Kickstart to deal with it. Um, I just just want to. Um, I where I see him on the forum and he's always polite and courteous oh, and yeah. he's trying to give people Ar help. Really... And yeah, he, he says himself. And I just wanted to read this before we move on. Is that um, he says uh, uh, they were, he was asked um, how this has affected him, and he said uh, it impacted me to a significant extent. All online controversies, a lot of time of attention that he's not dedicating to his wife children parents friends probably even you know future game designs um uh, he's experienced a lot of like negativity but also some some nice supported messages from people online and social media and everything on with your next game and don't worry about uh, about all of this it sucked but um for the most part i hope that i hope that you keep going because unbroken yeah we, is, we is hope good. that he'll, he'll keep making games because the game that he made are are good uh and the, the real problem here is uh someone took advantage of that and that golden golden studio just tanked his reputation and now people are going to feel very bad about that um yeah um the world of Unbroken is dreadful and a pretty terrible place. Uh, be it the Kickstarter Broken is dreadful and a pretty terrible place. Uh, be it the Kickstarter or the uh, actual uh, fighting monsters. So I think that we should should turn ourselves to a more wonderful world. Um, Audrey. Yes. Today I'm going to talk about a game that I bought. So all a more wonderful world. Um, Audrey. Yes. Today I'm going to talk about a game that I bought a month ago ish. It's a wonderful world from La Boite à Jeux. Yes, we're French. 
Uh, la boîte à jeu, they've run already two Kickstarters from It's a Wonderful World with the base game and uh, the first expansions and the second one with the bigger expansion that allows uh, getting up from five to seven players. I managed to get a copy, uh, a Kickstarter copy when they put the remainers for sale. It was of course uh, a good price, honestly. I think I paid 115 euros for everything. So the, the principle of the game is a drafting and resource managing game to build buildings. Buildings or uh, neighborhoods, yeah. It is quite similar in the mechanics, in if we look at it from afar, than uh, from Seven Wonders. It, it's often compared to it, but it has lots of um, small subtleties that make it really different. So the first phase is a drafting kit, really different. So the first phase is a drafting phase, like Seven Wonders. You get a card, you give your uh, pile of cards to the player to your left and etc. until cards are exhausted. There is a, dif a different mechanic if you're playing two people where you have each 10 cards at the start, you exchange, you take a card, you exchange. There is a, dif a different mechanic if you're playing two people where you have each 10 cards at the start, you exchange, you take a card, you exchange the decks, you take a card, you exchange the decks, etc. until three cards are left. So in any case, you end up with seven cards that you keep. Each of these cards you will decide if you, you keep. Each of these cards you will decide if you will build the card or if you will scrap it for resource. Everything is indicated on the cards, so either the, co the cost, the resource they will give to you at each turn, and how much resources they give you if you scrap them. You build uh, some other cards, which will then provide resources the next turns, and you play in four different turns. The big difference with Seven Wonders is that resources are finite. There is a finite, a finite number of resources that you have gain each turn and then you can spend it because build three different things in the same turn hypothetically and it's okay because you have bricks if you have an item that needs two bricks then you have to have a second card with bricks or buy bricks to another player here in it's a wonderful world each card will generate you a certain amount of cubes of recent black and gray and you will spend the cubes so really there is that amount of resources that is the it's the how can i say that in english it's the it, that's what you have to manage you have to manage this number of cubes and put up the four turns are done you can count victory points which are marked on a certain amount of cards some do give victory points some don't and some give victory points depending on some conditions some cards will give you one victory point per green card you built for instance so all in all the mechanics of the game are pretty simple. All in all the mechanics of the game are pretty simple. You can explain them quite fast, but then you have a depth in the choosing to scrap, choosing where to spend your resources that can really make things very different. And you can see that there is a solo mode, very different. And you can see that there is a solo mode and in the solo mode you have objectives to build certain cards. In that solo mode you can then rate how many points you did and I can see that uh, in the in that solo mode, you can then rate how many points you did, and I can see that uh, in the communities, and the people share the, the amount of points that they did in a solo play, the numbers can really vary greatly. So very, this is a game that you keep learning over time, and over time you miss all that mechanics, and I think that's something that's really interesting. I think that the ceiling is higher than with Seven Wonders, actually. And then for just a few mentions of the expansions, there are in fact three different expansions. Uh, Peace and War, uh, Leisure and Decay, and, oh, and Pop.
example, and it's the seven player expansion. And each expansion has some envelopes that you can open one after the other and then give you a campaign with scenarios. And at the end of each scenario, you can get special cards depending on the outcome, etc. So it really helps for replayability because you might play one campaign with you have different experiences of gameplay. Yeah, actually, I uh, what I love of this game is that when you build, you actually build resources like in a pipeline. So you do first gray cubes, and uh, that allows you to have a mar first gray cubes, and uh, that allows you to have a margin to mm, produce gray cube, which can be used immediately for the next step of production. So as a software engineer, I have to say it's uh, a very, very fulfilling and satisfying game phase. It's actually fulfilling and satisfying game phase. It's actually quite good. It's very interesting. That's what interested me in the mechanics of the game, uh, uh, mostly and prominently. So you really enjoy gray cubes? Uh, not exactly that, but <laughs> the, the construction of stuff. Anyway, yeah, oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> My boyfriend has been a bit frustrated with, because we played only two players for now. Because, and I think that's one of the disadvantages of a two player mod, is that you always see the same two decks of cards coming back to you over and over again. So, if again, while I think if you are more players, you will see them come back to you less. At the end, you will still have a last card and have to pick it. But I think that it, there might be a bit less frustration over seeing over and over the same cards. Yeah, actually, this is a uh, uh, downside of a lot of engine building games when you draft from a common pool and there's not a lot of randomization in that part so that you have control on resources. The upside is that you have control on all the outcomes. Uh, the downside is that uh, there's a bit of lack of variety with fewer players count. Is that uh, there's a bit of lack of variety with fewer players count. We, we have to start uh, playing the Peace and War expansion. Uh, we've already looked at what the first scenario, uh, what's the output of the first scenario, and to the players that will uh, stay active for the next scenarios and change. These are small changes, but I think that when you pile cards over each other at the end of each scenario, at the, the last scenario of the campaign can be very interesting. Yeah, actually, I, I have a couple of questions because it's uh, actually interesting. Uh, how's the campaign mod? The, uh, I've only lo looked at the Peace and War uh, first scenario, so I don't really uh, have much insight into how this play, because I like to keep things a bit secret, and so I didn't, so I didn't want to look the other ones. Uh, yeah, yeah. At, the, at the very beginning, the idea is just you make a, a, a game like the other ones. It's very, it's really no change for the first scenario. Then at the end, you count the points. The player that has more points can become, I think, the world leader, depending on if a condition has been reached or not. I don't remember the, what the condition is. And the other players will be the basically followers of a world leader. And the world leader gets a card with a certain power and the followers get another card with uh, another power which is a bit less powerful. If the condition hasn't been reached, again I don't remember that condition, the leading player can get a master spy um, card and the other ones get other spy cards and again the world leader, enfin, the spy leader will have a more powerful card than the other. Adding a card which is the world summit or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's actually uh, very interesting uh, because th these kind of games uh, tend to suffer from runaway leaders. Like someone is getting advantage uh, in early games, someone is getting advantage uh, in early games, and advantage just keeps accumulating, and uh, you end up uh, uh, always, the other players are always pursuing the leader, and uh, the leader just gets uh, farther and farther away. 
the leader just gets uh, farther and farther away. Uh, I think uh, from what I saw, but uh, I actually want to hear from experience. So we will probably talk about this in next uh, in later episodes because that's interesting. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's a wonderful word because I can't see it mentioned anywhere. Honestly, the, these power cards are not really game breaking. I think it's something like it may give you two points on a scenario and one if you are not the leader. Uh, it's something like that. So when you can reach a number of points that is around 50 or more. It's uh, a game with the same mechanics in development, like it's a wonderful something. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to end with that. Uh, la boîte à jeu, uh, or is it la boîte de jeu? I can never remember. They are preparing another Kickstarter for next month, April, and it's going to be It's a Wonderful King. I wanted to end with that. Uh, la boîte à jeu, uh, or is it la boîte de jeu? I can never remember. They are preparing another Kickstarter for next month, April, and it's going to be It's a Wonderful Kingdom. The basic mechanics will remain the same. But there is a big difference. It's a wonderful kingdom is really a kingdom. The basic mechanics will remain the same, but there is a big difference. It's a wonderful kingdom is really aimed only for one to two players. Oh, that's cool. Yes, and uh, apparently there are more, um, more um, interactions between uh, how you play. Uh, they published an update uh, recently about uh, sister sister cards or something like that. I'm just reopening it and it's um, in, it's a modular. So each module will change an aspect of the game, a rule, a way to score points. So that will really make for good replayability, which is really enjoyable. And they talked about the Mines uh, module, which is which will give each player a pack of Mines that you will try to send to your adversary uh, via the core game mechanics. The idea is to uh, make your adversary pick up the Mines that you hide, because it's a game a, a bit about bluffing. And if a player picks a sister that will take off a resource by turn on each card on on that is being built, and if you don't um, resource by turn on each card on on that is being built, and if you don't um, vanquish them at the end of the game, there will be negative points. And if you gain around the four sisters in the game, there will be more points, etc., etc. So I think that's uh, depending on the other. If you gain around the four sisters in the game, there will be more points, etc., etc. So I think that's uh, depending on the other modules that they show until then. That's going to be very interesting because I think that's the advantage where uh, these games. It's a wonderful world. Was I think 60 or. 60 or maybe 50. I have plans to pack it's a wonderful kingdom. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I'm when there's a launch page, I think I will get there because uh, it's interesting and I don't want to miss this out. Yeah, a great thing as well is that they on the cards they are really almost windmill or etc. But that's not something that requires lots of traduction. So it's really only just the rule book that has to be translated, which is great. And they usually do the Kickstarter in French and in English, and then you can pick your language. And for me, it's great as well, because since they're French, they have partnerships with many. But really, the French backers win a lot there. We win. <laughs> We're going to move on to the next topic. Uh, uh, it's a wonderful world. Uh, our backers should know that uh, currently on our Patreon, there's an unboxing by uh, Audrey uh, that you posted a few days ago. A few days, a, a few days ago. Wow, <laughs> we are cheating. <laughs> uh, we, we definitely are cheating, but hey, this is the future. I can... A few days ago. Wow, <laughs> we are cheating. <laughs> uh, we, we definitely are cheating, but hey, this is the future. I can do whatever I want. Time is relative. It's all a big circle. Or maybe a twisty exactly. Mobius loop, depending on which book you're I... reading. Schrodinger's Stanley. <laughs> 
So fan, do you have a Dingers Stanley? <laughs> so fan, do you have a disaster story to share now? Well, yeah, going on in the background of this podcast, and you, I don't know if it get left in or not, but there was an incident with some balking earlier. Um, our tap in the bathroom started like leaking, and so our tap in the bathroom started like leaking, and so. Uh, we took a look at it and it was a bit too complicated to fix. So plumber's been round and sorted all of that out. But uh, I went out during the podcast. Um, I got a message just from uh, from the folks saying, "I we're all done and plumber's gone. We're gone." So I popped in to just check it, and I uh, uh, the dog stranger who's been in the house. She got to say hello to him and lick his hand, but uh, that's not enough to make him trusted. That's just you know what you taste like uh so i so i was like okay you have a you know come in and have a look and she was very curious so i thought i would show her what's happened uh here she's walking in now she knows i'm talking about her she's taking gym getting you and every once in a while anyway um so she's a rescue dog uh originally from aruba and um so she's got a number of triggers of various types because it seems she wasn't treated very well when she was young uh, i will tell the story one day of uh, how we found her or i should say how the rescue found her um uh, and i was like look look pam see they just uh, they just it's a new tap and i turned the tap on and that was the start of a series of disasters because it seems likely she was punished with water when she was younger because she's absolutely terrified of it, which makes little sense as a dog comes from an island in the tropics, um, or near in the tropics, um, or near the tropics. Oh, yeah. So um, she freaked out and uh, ran off and started just trashing the house, in um, knocking things over, running around, thinking that I was going to punish her. She ended up curled up by the the back door with her tail between her legs, like trying to appease me with her tail between her legs, like trying to appease me, saying, no, look, please, please, I'm uh, I'm, I'm not being bad. And so I had to explain to her that, uh, that no, she's not in trouble. I wasn't trying to scoosh her with water. Um, I just wanted to show her the tap. So we went back in and she inspected the tap and I didn't go anywhere near it and she had a sniff tap and I didn't go anywhere near it and she had a sniff and it's all sorted now. But uh, I was absent for about, I think about five minutes of, of the podcast then because of, because of that. And luckily I muted my microphone, otherwise you would have heard a lot of noise and nonsense. So I'm going to have to re-listen to catch uh, more stuff about It's a Wonderful World, but it doesn't to catch uh, more stuff about It's a Wonderful World, but it doesn't sound right up my alley. Yeah. What you looking at me for? Oh. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> she knows. She knows I'm talking about her. They, they always know. Yeah. So, after talking about uh, the experience of the dog, um, uh, maybe we can can come to the next topic, which is about animals as well, in a role play setting. Why not? We love animals. We do. Yeah, Everdell. same. <laughs> Uh, root, uh, red wall. Yes, 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 love it all. I. Oh, sorry, Margot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. do do yes. We're all primed and ready for some animal adventures of the most cute and cuddly kind. So take so it. So it, it's now the, it's now the right time to mention that there's uh, a new arachnid species found in Australia, which is named after Abaddon the Despoiler from K. That's the cute animal, I guess. <laughs> no. Well, that... After I tell you about this RPG, you might ask yourself what the special power of friendships are. Friendship are. If, yeah, if you for want... ponies, friendship is for ponies. <laughs> if you want to very quickly be on the side of, of that kind of stuff, that basically its um, scientific name is you bastard, which I do like. <laughs> 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 But uh, come on, it's time. It's time we get on with this. Do take it away, David. So I'm going today. I'm going to talk uh, about a heartwarming role-playing game called Golden Sky, Sky Stories, which is like a rather unusual usual setting for I think for a role-playing game. It's uh, basically you play um, animal spirits or hangi in um, in yeah Japanese uh, suburban setting with like small city with like woods around it around it. And you play these animal spirits that want to help people or other animal spirits around. And it's a non-violent RPG, so there will be no fighting at all. It's uh, very, like, the illustration is very cute. 
and um like all the animals have like special the animals have like special powers like you have like your classical uh yeah like tanuki but can, there are like... no tanuki there huh? are tanukis sorry there are tanukis yeah you can play tanukis oh i i i checked the demo there is fox cat bird and something else but not tanuki i was so disappointed what well, well, there is it's uh um... cool in the demo i'm guessing that they didn't put the full thing yeah they 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 kept the big guns for of later of course how else are you going to do a demo if you're going to give out people all the best bits you got to get them wanting the yeah. exciting stuff so let's get on with this tanuki so it's not the tanukis with the enormous testicles right it i mean it's the it's a, the enormous testicles yeah it's a raccoon dog <laughs> <laughs> it's a raccoon dog, which is like, I think it's it's the tanuki. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a raccoon. Brilliant. Well, you, I, it's, thank you for a heartwarming little piece about like animals helping each other, and you're right in there with the testicle talk. Yeah, I mean, I'm exactly. guessing that the superpower is not related to the testicle. <laughs> Re- remember, I, I, remember that testicles is okay, but this is the edge of what we can say. Someone, someone clip that. <laughs> someone clip that. I want uh, That's the sound bite there. Uh, what's the target age for this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I would say you can start start this role playing game with kids because it's like non violent. It's more like narrative. There's it's not rules heavy. It's all about the relationship between the different like player characters and the end. And like there's like no rolling involved. Like most of the time. You have a certain, like, let's say you want to jump over a river, then you you may, like, uh, choose if you want to do it as a... Y- your abilities are basically, like, uh, four diff- different ones. Uh, basically, uh, like, Henge, let's, which is, like, your spiritual power. Then it's Animal, which is, like, run, feel, and hide. Then you have Adult. It's, like, use machines like knowledge and hide your feelings and then you have child which is like play wheel and get protected so that that are your like four and you just compare your attribute if you want to do something and if the like the gm thinks you're you're like this is, should, could be rather difficult then you have could uh, yeah, then then you have to see if you get with your attribute about the threshold however if you uh, like above the threshold you can use feelings feelings is something you can get uh, from the connections with other people or other hangar or whatever and like your your main source of power are like the, the connections you have with the town and the people and your friends around the town with like different relationships and it's like rather interesting because you try to influence other people or like other hangar other animal spirits in a good way so like uh, you you want to be like you want to help them uh just mm, and then you get like resources of wonder and and dreams this is uh, like your main resources for the role-playing game you, you know what this is starting to make me think of um just to go on a really brief tangent the john oliver show did a bit about a japanese village that had a, a mascot who'd lost their um uh, chitan their um companion mascot their um, companion mascot so he sent out chi john who's a cute little like otter mascot and it's it was all really heartwarming and wonderful but uh... Uh, it's a thing that's very uh popular in in japanese culture and that's that's the main inspiration <laughs> of the um, uh the golden city game uh which i think is a uh, main inspiration <laughs> of the um uh, the Golden City game, uh, which I think is a is a great inspiration to have that sort of wholesomeness, uh, plushy animal um, style to it. I think it's a great setting for uh, a role playing game, and whenever there's a new, I think it's a great setting for uh, a role playing game. And whenever there's a new uh, role playing game that uh, offers some interesting and fun narrative and non-violent um type game i'm always clapping yeah like an author like it's no, like it's the illustration <laughs> like <laughs> the illustration illustration everything it's like super cute as well and like the like the special abilities of the different types of animals 
<laughs> like uh, just an example you, when you play a bird you can have like of course you can fly you can also help other people to fly but at the same time you might get a little uh, bird brain which can keep up with a lot of information you just cut out you forget things and which is like some small huge weaknesses which makes it rather fun to play the different characters and personally for me it gives gives a lot of those ghibli wipes you know like my neighbor totoro it reminds me a lot of the yep. kind of stories and you can retell them with with those with those uh with this rpg which is like fantastic yeah I'm really looking forward to play it once with my my son once once he's uh, old enough to play rpgs yeah that's actually cute and uh, I- uh, the image of a Doraemon episode without uh, the gadgets uh, is continuously popping in my mind. I, I think that an, a, a session of this game plays like a Doraemon episode. A bit of kind of conflict, but people wanting to help against occur, and then you end resolving everything. Yeah, exactly. It's like you can do this uh, like non-violent role play with like you can pl- play tricks on like underhanger with if you play a mischi- mischievous fox or something, which is like uh, rather fun. And you can keep it, like yeah, light-hearted and positive. You know, like sometimes I prefer like uh, rather dark settings like the Genesis. But on the other side, uh, those kinds kind of uh, role playing games that are super wholesome are also very welcome from my side. <laughs> yeah, it says a lot about your psychological health. The Genesis, then Golden Sky Stories. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, let's talk about the serious stuff. Does the Tanuki do that shape shifting thing with the leaf and the rock? Um, I f- certain things like you can do the Tanuki dance, <laughs> oh. uh, which is like um, M- moving if, if... around your enormous testicles. Let's say. <laughs> Let's let's say like uh, the Tanuki dance is like a sp- certain power which lets you like you can start to dance and then everybody uh, uh, less, uh, have less adult, which is like your, this attribute um, has to follow suit. Like they have to dance with you. They can they can't stop dancing if, and start laughing and having fun. You know, <laughs> it's one yeah. of the special abilities of the Tanuki. That, that's actually a game uh, a, a few table and they have, have honest fun playing it. Yeah, or like uh, I remember a scene like uh, where when we played it, like one of the players gave money to one of the non-player characters and when he returned home, like he wanted to buy like ice and he gave him like, I think, like a word. Like and the NPC was like super surprised and when he get, once he get, got home, um... And uh, like uh, remove the money from his pockets and put it like uh, in front of his uh, his desk, <laughs> and uh, he was like that morning it all turns turned back into leaves <laughs> and acorns and stuff like that, yeah. which is like uh, yeah that's Tanuki stuff makes makes it makes up for some funny situations. The one thing that uh, really striked me when I first looked at the game was definitely the art style. Uh, RPG games uh, often have a really pretty uh, game book, but uh, Golden St- uh, Sky with its wholesome uh, art is just incredible. Uh, I think it's it looks really, really, really nice. Yeah, it is because it takes like this. I mean, it looks a bit like. Chi- I mean, it looks a bit like chibi art style. A bit. Yes, I'm the master of TB and I say yes. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, and another thing, this uh, what this RPG makes like really good. Uh, it has like those small gray boxes inside the uh, which explains like certain uh, Japanese cultural things, which is like something I really appreciated, because it's not like only saying uh, that's the way it is, but it also explains it. Which is something I really appreciate because it gives you uh, like more immersion. It all also tells you something about the uh, the clay in it, which is like really well done. That's good. 
it, it definitely uh, looks like a very fun game that uh, I would love to play with uh, some friends. Uh, and I think that's all the time that we have for this episode. You can catch us at patreon.com slash the last standy or the last standy on Twitter or the last standy on Twitter. And so until next time. So goodbye from uh, me, uh, Alessio. Bye. Audrey. Bye bye. David. Bye. And Fen. Goodbye. And remember that the second E in standy is for experience. Mm-hmm.